Within this video, we're going to go ahead and continue in lesson one. Specifically, we're going to go ahead and work through the interface challenge, plain and simple. So you go ahead and just follow along here inside the PDF, and of course, follow along here inside of the video. One of the most enjoyable things to play with inside of a game engine is the physics, and we're going to go ahead and play with that now. You have noticed that when we actually roll a ball into one of these buckets, the buckets just kind of stay there. They don't really move or do anything. So we're going to fix that problem. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and select all of these buckets because we can do this to all three of these in one go. Simply hold control or command on a Mac and left mouse click on each one of them. And then over here in the far right hand side, you'll find a section called the details panel. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you're in the physics section. So you can click on this little physics button right here. If you are on the general or the all, just click on physics. And the very first toggle that you see is a simulate physics button. So let's go ahead and just turn that one on. So now when I go ahead and play, you will notice that the buckets will actually move a little bit when the ball rolls into it. It's not a whole lot, but it's at least a start. Something else that we can actually do is manipulate the mass. So we do have a checkbox here. And when we toggle this on, we do have the ability to change its mass. Then the mass is done in kilograms. So if you're not used to kilograms, go ahead and find a converter. What I want to go ahead and do is change this from 100 kilograms, which is quite a bit, and I'm going to just change this down to one kilogram just so that you see the extreme difference. Now, when I go ahead and hit play, we will see a very big difference when it lands inside that bucket. I will warn you, there are a couple things you should be aware of. If you try and go too low, so if I were to try to put in zero, you can't actually go that low. And if you put a number that is really, really big, it's just not gonna move because it's way too heavy. So if I were to leave this at 0 0.001 and go ahead and play, we'll get a very different response and see some very rather entertaining things. So with that little sidebar out of the way, let's actually jump into the actual challenge for this. And the challenge is to actually get a ball to roll all the way across this kitchen and actually land in a bucket. But we're not gonna be using this setup. Instead, what we're gonna be using is this right here, this challenge. So inside of the levels, let's go ahead and do a few things. Let's turn off our inclined plane and turn on the actual challenge. To do this, first we're going to right click on this one and come down into our change streaming method and just set this to blueprint. Now we don't need to see this anymore, so let's go ahead and just click on the little eyeball. And the one we do want to see is this challenge, so we'll turn that one on. And we're gonna see anything just yet. I'm gonna go ahead and just right click on this now, I'm going to change streaming method, and then go to always loaded. So once you get this actually set up, if you look up, you will actually see the actor spawner floating up here up above. And if you look down to the bottom left, we have the actual bucket that we want to get into. So this one right here. So to be able to see both of these on screen at once, simply just press the seven key on the keyboard and it will reorient where the camera is. So now we can actually see we have our item spawner up here. We have our bucket here and we have all this empty space to play with. And the idea here is we want to use some inclined planes to get the ball that's going to drop from here to land in our bucket down here. So if we press the play button right now, you get a chance to kind of see what this is going to do. And it does what you expect, the ball actually drops. Now, it's totally up to you to how you do this. And the idea behind this is that you're going to be using what we've been playing with thus far, as far as moving and rotating and manipulating the shape of those inclined planes to get one of those balls to go across many inclined planes to land in the actual bucket. So just so that you remember, if we go into our content drawer, I'm gonna go into the geometry scripts and what you're looking for is these inclined planes right here. So just click and drag one of these in here. And then I go ahead and just lift it up and go ahead and use the rotation tools and go ahead and just rotate these. You may want to turn your snaps off and go ahead and use the little widget right here and use my gizmo. And I can actually just make this bigger and wider and longer. I'll go ahead and click on the actual cheese here and then I can put this right underneath and make sure that that line is there. It's dropping directly down the little line here underneath our little spawner. And then go ahead and start to rotate and move these. So like so, so let's go ahead and grab that one, just push that back. And if I want to duplicate one of these, again, just hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, left mouse and click on any of these arrows, and we can get a second one. And then just go ahead and start to build this so that it moves around all the way across to get into here. Now, one little pro tip that I definitely want to throw at you, and I just did it, so I want to talk about it, is if you hit the W key, you can actually get the move gizmo. If you tap the E key, it'll give you your rotation gizmo. So you can actually bounce between these two just by hitting W and E. Once you actually get the ball to roll into the bucket, you're going to want to show off your work and show off all the inclined planes that you built. So to do that, we're going to take a screenshot. 
And you can do this a couple of different ways. You could very easily just press the F9 key on the keyboard. But if you don't have that, we've actually built a cool tool that will allow you to take a screenshot and save it. To get to this tool, you're gonna open up the content drawer down here at the very bottom. And you're gonna to wanna to go to the blueprints folder. Inside of the blueprints folder, go ahead and open up the miscellaneous folder. And then here, you're gonna find a BPU, this is a blueprint utility screenshot. So just right click on this. And at the very top, there's this run editor widget. So go ahead and click on this. You're going to get a little pop-up that shows up here. This is really nice because you can actually name your screenshot. So in case you want to put your own name on it or the date or whatever it happens to be, you can just type some stuff in here. And then you can choose the resolution. By default, it'll just be the 1920 by 1080. And all you have to do is click this big take screenshot button. It'll go ahead and take a screenshot. You'll see it right here. And then in the bottom right-hand corner of the UI, you will notice that there is a little pop-up. If I click on that pop-up, it'll actually open up the folder where this was saved. And you can see that, hey, this has actually got the same name. So you can just double click on this and you'll be able to see all of your work. So there you have it. Go ahead and take on this challenge. Go ahead and turn on your physics and take a screenshot of all your work so that you can show off all the cool stuff that you've created.